with the sounds of Fort Benning's military drills rumbling in the distance. Competitors in the ASA's four pro classes spent the last two days sniping Delta McKenzie targets among the southern pines of Uchi Creek. Now that the dust has settled, the fields are set for the pro pressure point shootdowns. Who will rise to the occasion and take home the title of elite pro-am champion? You've got your whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge as we find out right now. All right, welcome everyone to the Elite Archery Pro-Am, the second leg on our 2022 Delta McKenzie Tour. You can see our dates there. We will be next month down in Louisiana. In June, we've got two of them, London, Kentucky, Metropolis, and winding up with the Delta McKenzie Classic at the end of July. Full schedule we've got here, beautiful day. Look at that wind. That is going to be a factor definitely in tonight's Pro Pressure Point shootdowns. Welcome to the Competition Archery Media Broadcast. I'm PJ Riley sitting alongside Darren Christianberry, Elite Pro. And Darren, a beautiful weekend. Man, we got some conditions for this afternoon, though. We do. The weather's been absolutely perfect. It's typically not this low of humidity when we're here. It's usually hot and sweltering, and we're in shorts and miserable. But the weather's been perfect. Um, we shoot in the woods and the big, tall pines. Wind is usually never a factor. We're out here on a wide open hillside next to the river, and I promise you the wind will be a factor today. Absolutely, and we should mention that where we are, it's called Uchi Creek Campground, which is a facility associated with Fort Benning. Mike Tyrell, uh, president of the ASA, we've been coming here for years, and he's going to tell us about our facility and this weekend. This tournament is the Elite Pro-Am. Uh, Elite Archery is a great sponsor of ours. We really appreciate their support. We are at the uh, Uchi Creek Camp Campground, which is part of the Fort Benning MWR properties. It's actually on the Alabama side, and Benning is across the river in Georgia. And where we are right now is uh, part of the MWR's campground. Behind me, if you, I don't know if you can see it, the, is the Chattahoochee River. We're down to 13 ranges this week, but a week ago they had some really heavy rains and one of our ranges got flooded. Man, we were, there was no way we were gonna get dried out in time. So we went down to 13 ranges, so it's gonna be a little bit more compact than normal. We like to have 14 for everybody. So we only set out 390 targets this week instead of 400 or something. But yeah, the site's gonna work out fine. Everybody seems to be in a good mood. The weather after today is supposed to be beautiful. We'll be in the 70s and, and uh, the rain we got last night is starting to, to go away, hopefully. And so once the Chattahoochee recedes, we'll be ready to shoot. We've been coming here for over 20 years, off and on. And the reason we'd like to come here is because it is such a, a large canvas to, to, pick, to do what we do. I mean, we have an activity center to set up for the sponsors. They do an Oktoberfest here in October for the, the base, and that brings in uh, a lot of vendors. So there's a plenty of power for our, our sponsors. Uh, there's plenty of parking for everybody. So it's got all the attributes you really like to see. It's, uh, you know, like I said, we've been, we've, we're constantly reinventing the ranges here because of things that happen. They'll build cabins on our, our campgrounds right where we had ranges and things like that. So that's been the kind of the challenge out here. I know they're not, but they all look the same. The last time we were here with a normal March event, we drew right around 1,900 shooters. We are having people call us up right now and say that with the gas prices as they currently as high they are, particularly pipe like Texas, they're saying this is the one they're going to have to miss because they just don't see themselves spending that kind of money. So we do know that gas prices are going to be somewhat of consideration for people, always have been, always will be. Courses are, are really heavily wooded. I mean, a lot of pine, not as much hardwood in the, in the ranges as, as there is pine in those areas. Uh, in the mornings, uh, we've had mornings here, we, we can't even start till 8 o'clock because the sun doesn't really come up till 7.30. We would normally start at 7.30. Here the rule is as soon as you can see the Black Panther, you can, you can start shooting your rounds. That part of it is probably the one thing more than anything else, particularly this fog, that the, the morning rounds can be really kind of tough on people. The terrain itself, most of it's relatively level, like you're seeing here, it's relatively flat. There's one set of ranges that actually would go down overlooking the Chattahoochee River. They, they got a little, little extra 
stuff going on in there. You got, we actually have two targets set there where you're actually standing sideways facing downhill and then shooting this way. And that's kind of fun to watch them try to figure that one out, especially after the rains. So, so those are the, the basic ranges. The pro ranges are, uh, I think they're gonna be really pleasantly surprised about how hard they are. Uh, whether they're gonna cry or not, I have no idea. If they do cry, it makes Don's life so much better. You know, Don, our tournament director, is retiring after this season, so his, his goal in life is to get one more ouch out of somebody. Okay, so we're currently standing actually on the, on the range where we'll be shooting the pro shoot down on Saturday evening. It starts at five o'clock on the Sportsman Channel, and uh, we'll start with the women's pros as usual. They'll be shooting right towards the river back there, so it'd be a really nice setting for that. We feel like we've got a venue that's gonna allow us to you know, bring everybody in and enjoy it. Uh, this is right next to their country store and it's right next to the river. So it's kind of a, a nice place to kind of come down here and, and uh, have a shoot down, have people around. We even have indoor plumbing right behind me, so that's a, always a bonus. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. And, and uh, you know, the, obviously the, the pro shoot down, because of the fact that, that uh, you know, shoot your points are, are already at risk. Uh, the pro shoot down, those points don't go towards shooter of the year, but it does make a statement about the success of your season. And I think Danny McCarthy's won, what, the last six in a row in the men open pro class, which is relatively unheard of by someone other than Levi Morgan, actually. So that's been an impressive run to see if that can continue this week, and we uh, wish Danny all the best. But at the same time, there's a lot of horses out there in the race, so I wouldn't, if I had a pro perfecta sheet, I don't know I'd necessarily lean towards him for the winners. Because uh, if you want to win the Lancaster gift certificates during the pro shoot downs, you got to bet on the horses that are going to win the race. All right, Darren. So uh, our archers are out on the line now. They just finished their judging. We should mention that in ASA, there's two types of classes. Mm -hmm known and unknown tell us about those two the unknown divisions are stepping up to a stake in the woods and here in the shoot down and they're guessing how far the targets are they're using you know their mental photos that they've taken over the years with all of these pictures they're using detail uh they're they're looking at the ground trying to figure out how far away that target is they set their sight and then they aim accordingly the known distance guys they use a rangefinder they'll know exactly how far away they are to the tenth of the yard all right, so we want to get a look at our field of targets tonight. We're going to go to the third member of our team, Louis Holmes. We are here at the 2022 Elite Pro-Am, our second stop of the Delta McKenzie Tour. Tonight, the archers are going to be shooting the first target, number one, is going to be the hyena. Number two target will be the turkey, the feeding doe. The fourth target is going to be the black panther. And the last target will be the brown bear. They have a sixth target um, that they may or may not put up as the howling wolf. On uh, this target, we're going to explain the scoring rings. Basically, we have a, a lower 12. This 12 is always going to be in play. If an archer puts an orange cone in front of them while shooting, that's signaling that they want to shoot the upper 12. This is your 10. Don't be confused with the core line. That's so you can replace the core. And then you have an 8. This is the line outside of the core. Anything outside of the 8 is a 5. Now, if the archers really think they need to get an advantage or they have to catch up, they're going to be shooting the 14. Back to PJ. All right, thanks, Louie. Hey, we are excited to get started here. First up, we're gonna see the women's pro division. We'll be right back.
Oh, dang. All right, Darren, so earlier, our fifth place spot had to be decided by a shoot off between Christine Harrelson and Aaron McLattery. A one arrow shoot off. You can see them shooting here, closest to center of the 12. And Christine, Christine ended up coming out on top of that shoot. But that's after two days of shooting, one hour shoot off to decide that. So they were tied on score and bonus rings. Correct. All right, welcome back everyone to the Pro Pressure Point shoot down here at the Elite Archery Pro-Am Uchi Creek Campground in Alabama. We're ready to get started with our women's pro class. We're gonna go to Louis Holmes, who's gonna bring in our archers. All right, qualifying in our fifth spot with a 394 from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Christine Harrelson. And qualifying in the fourth spot with a 398 from Dublin, Georgia, Kaylee Johnston. And in the third spot, from Lapeer, Michigan, with a 398, Cara Kelly. <laughs> Sitting in the number two spot, from Ozika, Wisconsin, with a 409, Emily McCarthy. The number one qualifier in the women's shootdown from Townville, South Carolina, with a 418, Sharon Wallace. All right, as we mentioned earlier, and you saw in the video. All right, Darren, we're going to see that leaderboard here in a second. Uh, but Sharon Wallace, I want to point out, look at that score, 418. Yeah, that's great. And doing some math there, Sharon hit 12 bonus rings, so that means she hit 12 12s in qualifying. So 12 12s would be 24 up potential. She ended up with a 418, so she only shot three eights this weekend. She only made three mistakes, really. Getting through 40 targets and only doing minimizing the damage like she did, a 418 is a fantastic score to be top of the leaderboard. So that score, the men's and women's pro both shot the same course. Her score, there would have been on the leaderboard for the men's division. That's awesome. She would have lost on bonus rings, but 418 would have got her in there. Sharon shoots at a very high level along with all these other girls out there, but a 418, she's got a nine point lead. Um, the wind is gonna be tricky tonight. So I usually can try to predict and say, oh yeah, this should be an easy race. It's never over till it's over. That's why we shoot them all out. The wind will be a factor. This is a totally different setting than what they saw in qualification. So you just never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, this okay, is going to be exciting. We certainly have seen Metropolis last year. We saw the wind just blow things up. Yes. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. No pun intended. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the wind's not bad right now. No. I feel like sometimes it's swirling. It's hitting me from the left, and it's coming in from the right. So they'll get calibrated on their yardage here and figure out the wind, aim accordingly, and this should be a pretty good shoot down. So Sharon Wallace, there's Christine Harrelson. Let's start with her. Just missed on that bear. I don't There's think, Emily. I don't think anybody called for an upper. Sharon Wallace did, and we'll talk about that. Okay, gotcha. That's a new part of her game that she and her husband, Jack, who we'll see later, mm -hmm. Jack has worked on with her to play that upper game, and Sharon said, hey, that's why I won this weekend. Yeah, well, good for her. I have yet to figure that upper game out, so I need to go visit Jack and Sharon, <laughs> it sounds like. Did we have an archer who didn't shoot yet, or? I'm not sure. Kara's playing with her sight. There's target one. Oh, all right. We're scoring already. We'll find out what happened on that Panther. There's a 10 for Sharon. That's what she needs to do is keep it in the 10 ring. Here's the turkey. This is Emily. Next up, Emily McCarthy, currently a 409. 
you can see that line there around that. That's a core line. That's a replaceable core in that target. So that will be an eight right there. Now this is the one. As soon as our scorekeepers, our scores, call it. Donald hold up the number immediately. Okay, she got that. Was that. I'm not sure. Did Kaylee shoot the Black Panther? That uh, might have been. We have a restricted view here from where we're at in the booth, so as soon as Ken and Scott have bear with us as we the call these out. There's a good 10 on that feed and dough. That's for Cara. So Kaylee. I'm not even going to call that number. You're making me crazy. Go down to that. There's an arrow. Oh. <laughs> we just missed it. Yeah, we missed it somehow. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's right. <laughs> All like right, good. I didn't want to come out We're here with a miss on the like target. A solid 10. Good, good shot for Kaylee. Yes. Moves her to a 408. And then we saw Christine shoot that brown bear. I think she's just a touch wide. We'll see what they say here in a second. And Christine Harrelson. She did get an eight. We have an eight also. Moves her to a 402, if my math's correct. Yep. All right. So pretty much held same positions mm -hmm. there. Sharon did All extend right. her lead to 11 points. And what we will do, we're going to shoot five targets in regulation. Any female, any archer that's within 10 points of the leader after five targets will get to shoot a sixth and final arrow that Louie talked about. There's a wolf back there if they decide to bring it out. But... Archers have to be within 10 points of the leader for that to happen. So if Sharon maintains an 11.3 lead through these five targets, we won't see a sixth arrow. That's always. She she said her game plan coming in was to be safe and make the other ladies catch her. Yeah, and they do. They have to be aggressive to catch her. There's Carr always uh -huh. holding steady as usual. You can watch the ends of their stabilizers in those pictures and see how good they're aiming those bows. Sharon will explode in this shot here. She's putting good tension on that release, and you can see her arm fly back. Oh, just tall. She did go a little high on that one. There's a little gust there just as she shot. That's where you want to get lucky and gust into that 14 ring. It's Kaylee Johnston. Okay, Works as a I nurse when she is not out here shooting, so she's busy. Ooh, I think oh, there's a 12. I think Christine hit a bonus ring. For sure. 12 there we go. Points. That'll put her to a 414. Next up, our leader, Sharon Wallace, currently at 428. And 10 points ahead of anybody else in the class, which was the final arrow. The breeze is blowing pretty good. Yeah. And she's got an 8 on Picks her next up. target. Might be opening a door slightly for Emily McCarthy. She's it's got room, but I'm sure she didn't like that. No. Within 10 points of our leader. Shooting at either 12 is risky. You can see the low 12 sits low in the 10 ring. The high 12 sits it high in it, obviously. If you misjudge by one yard. Emily drilled that. She guy. smoked it. She if you misjudge one of these targets by one yard, that's usually about an inch per yard out there. So you have to get really close on your guesstimation to, to hit those rings. That is a four-point swing right there. Mm -hmm. And now Emily is within reach. Yeah, now She's it's only seven-point lead. So that's how accurate these ladies are judging. They're getting usually within one yard to hit Ten. those bonus rings. Kelly. That's incredible. incredible. Not an easy task. Whole other skill set out there. To be able to, I mean, you got to be a good archer, but then on top of that, you got to be able to judge distance. For sure. Ten for Kaylee Johnston. Ten for Kaylee. Right, Four eighteen, and you'll see later when we get into some of the other rounds how Kaylee, the me senior men and the open pros judged how high their scores are. They killed it this weekend, so yeah. people are people are judging well and they're shooting well for it to be this early in the season. The uh, women's pro and the open okay, pro well, shot a course sure yesterday that was stout. Yeah, there were some bombs and some tricky shots, so. Today was a little bit easier than yesterday. It wasn't an easy course, but yesterday was rough. Hmm. 
they didn't shoot like it was too rough. There's some pretty big yeah. scores on my sheet in front of me. <laughs> I know so. they they ran wild today. There were some Joseph Goza when we see him later. He really came up strong. <laughs> but uh, Sharon today, she had a real good day. There's a good look at Emily McCarthy. You see a lot of these. She's got four veins on her arrow. There's a lot of people going to a four-fletched arrow out here. I haven't tried it yet, but there may be something to it because a lot of people are doing it. Good shot on that bear from Cara. Yeah, There's Cara. a good look at Sharon. You'll see her arm explode again. She's ah, she's going to let down. She's shooting a thumb trigger release, and what she'll do when she gets to full draw, she'll wrap her thumb around that barrel, and she'll start pulling with her arm, elbow, shoulder, and extend that bow a little bit, and you'll watch this thing break. She explodes really good out of her shot. See that thumb wrap? Now she's going to start pulling with everything in her back end. Boom. Oh. And she nailed the upper. Right. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. <laughs> they do have a minute, we should say, to shoot, and she shot that with about 22 seconds left, so she was all right there. They're shooting that hyena pretty well. Ten, points Ten for, for Kaylee. Kaylee. Who's her for? 28? 28, yeah. I think, personally, judging in these open venues like that, it's easier to get the numbers. Where we qualify with all those pines, yeah. it's so tough to get the distance and depth perception. 10 for Christine Harrelson. Christine Harrelson, boy, she's wishing she had the other side of that one. Mm -hmm. Moves her to a 424. All right, for our leader, Sharon Wallace, courage a seven-point lead. Did she call upper? I, I couldn't don't see her call. She, she did not. She did oh, not. I bet she's four, kicking herself. So she goes to a 446. Now only trailing by seven points going to this arrow. And also ahead in bonus rings. And I'm sure she's looking for another one. Well, that Black Panther in this bright sunlight, I can see it from here. Those rings are glowing mm -hmm. down there. A lot of times they can't see them too well, but today they can. Yeah, out in the woods when the when the shadow from the trees are on those targets, you can't hardly you can see the rings in binoculars, but naked eye, and sometimes through your scope, you cannot see those rings. You're aiming at silhouettes. And for Cara, we have a ten. Ten right, for Cara. All right. So you mentioned the scopes. So mm -hmm. talk about that. Some. Archers shoot magnification. They Talk do. They do. Technology's changed this game so much. Out on the end of their sight, they have a scope, which is a magnified lens. You can get a two power, three power, four, five, six, and an eight, typically. And then you can run in your peep, which is like the rear side of a rifle. The peep sight sits in the bowstring, and there's different size apertures, 330 seconds, 364, 116, 18, 3. Th the list goes on and on. And then there's little pieces of glass you can put in there. So you can literally make these targets look like you're looking through binoculars. You can zoom them in. They get really clear. Sometimes when you run a clarifier, it blurs your pin out some. But there's just a million options out there for you to get the right kind of target clarity that you're looking for, something that suits your eye. So these girls can probably see some of these rings in their scope at full draw. And we should mention, though, the more you magnify it, the, the more, more you, you move. <laughs> yep, and you see that movement. If you can hold a bow rock steady, magnification's good. Center 10 there on that hyena. I think that is Kara. There's Sharon good back in 10. the middle. Yep. yep, she just missed that upper, and she did okay, call that one. First up. She's probably an eighth of an inch we'll under it, I'd say. And we should say we don't know these distances yet. Mm -hmm. We'll get it later in the known pro division, but we don't know how far. <laughs> that grazing doe is the farthest, yeah. however. Car. Car. Got a 10 on that hyena. Next up, Kaylee Johnston. The 10 here keeps her tied with Carl. These girls are so consistent. If you've watched this in the past, you see Cara, you see Kaylee, you see Sharon, you see Emily. Sometimes, you know, she, Christine's been in several of these, but these girls have a lot of experience and they can really play this game. That was Kaylee that shot that 12. Mm -hmm. Moves her to Turkey. 440, is that right? Yep. Next up, we're going to see. Eight for Christine. Christine. She was down in that core line there. All right. Our leaders She's at a 432. Loss, currently at 446. All right. 
Hanger Sharon on that Black Panther. For Chris, yeah, we have an upper 12 call. Let's see if she got that. Oh, it's close. I think it's Sharon? just short. Eighth inch, maybe. Taking a look at it. Ten points. Ten he calls. Okay. For Sharon Wallace. Four fifty six. So depending on what Emily does here, she's still going to enjoy yeah, the seven Emily point lead with a ten. Emily can cut it to five with a twelve. She did not call upper. There's no orange cone out in front of her. She just left of the 12 there. She judged it perfect. She just hit left. 449. So Sharon still has that seven point lead going into the fifth arrow here. And 12 bonus rings. Emily McCarthy is at 449 and 13 bonus rings. Yeah, that wind just, like right now, we just got a gust. has an opportunity to stay within 10 points of our leader. Johnson There's a good gust mm -hmm. now. They're thankful they're not shooting yeah. right now. It's intermittent, and like I said, I feel like it's coming from the left at times. I feel like it's coming from the right at times. Probably hard to, probably hard to guess where to aim out there because it will move those arrows. The 12 to get back into a tie with Kaylee if she takes the 10. If Kaylee takes a 12, Carl Mike Tyrell is explaining the parameters That's for this last arrow. Who needs go. what to get into that? Sixth arrow shoot mm -hmm. off if there Ready? is one. We'll start your one minute now. Right now, if I had to guess, barring disaster, I'd say it's going to be a two lady shoot off on the sixth arrow. Katie makes such a good, strong shot. She's got a good Just 10 left. on that long deer. Took Emily a few seconds to get settled in there. There she's at full draw. Now, you talked about Sharon's shot process. Mm -hmm. Emily shoots a hinge, yep. different style of release. Yep. Tell us about that. A hinge is a hook that rides on the back of a half moon. So there's no trigger, you know, you don't put pressure on it and get it to actually trigger like a, like a rifle trigger. You have to rotate that and that hook slides around that moon and once it gets to a falling off point, that hook will release. So tension is what sets that off. They call it back tension. They have to actually rotate that release. To, it's a surprise release. A lot of people shoot them. They're a great release to use in tournaments and to train with, uh, but it's different than the thumb trigger. And Emily made that one work. She inside out nailed that hyena. Emily, Emily did get that as 12. good a shot nice. as you can get on there. So that's 461, is that right? Yeah. Yep. Confirmed. Okay, Car Kelly. Currently a 438. That'll make the last tart, last arrow more interesting if it's just a five point swing. And for Cara. Just missed that. Ten for Carr. Ten for Carr. So these the ladies now, Carr, Kaylee, Christine, don't really have a shot at getting into that shootout, but they want third place. The mm -hmm. There's Kaylee Johnson. Kaylee on that deer. Good ten. Yeah, they're fighting for that third place podium spot. Ten. Puts her to right four fifty. So that'll move her to third, I believe. Yep. For Christine Harrelson. Third place is important because manufacturers, who whatever bow they're shooting, the bow manufacturers pay contingency on first, second, and third place, and it's thousands of dollars thousands. out here. Yep. First place in this contingency can be as high as $10,000 in this division. Yes. There's an eight for Christine. Moves her to a 440. My math is correct. The TV screen says my math was correct. And, uh, Sharon was Dude. gunning at this one. Did right. she call Let's up? Give all these a she didn't have her no. cone out there. Boy. Just a 10. She she's hit those working uppers. that upper game, but she didn't call mm -hmm. them. <laughs> Mentally, she's got that figured <laughs> out. <laughs> she said it makes her uncomfortable because she hasn't done it that much. Mm -hmm. But it's different. We shot for years. You know, ASA's been around since the 90s. And the upper 12 was never a thing. It wasn't even in the target. So the low 12 was the only 12 you had a chance to shoot at. But if you get a group of five, 
five people out there on the range and qualifying, and everybody puts their arrow in the 12 ring, the fourth and fifth guy don't even have a shot. You don't even want to shoot at it for fear of a glance out, hit a knock and glance into an eight or a five. It can be bad. So the upper 12 has changed that game, and some of these guys and gals have adapted that, and they shoot all uppers. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. It's hard <laughs> to get off that low 12. So our sixth shot is going to be at the Brown Bear. And Don Bailey and Scott Parrott, they're going to move the shooting stake is what they'll do. They'll shoot the same target they've been shooting, but they'll move the shooting position to a different spot. Looks like Scott Parrott's going wow. up quite a ways. He's moving it up a bunch. So the 14 ring will definitely be in play now with Emily being five points behind Sharon. The worst she can finish is second because there's only two of them left. So she really has no option other than shoot at the 14. Scott likes the number, gives a big smile. Even if Emily hits the 14, I think Sharon, yeah. she just has to shoot a 10 to win if Emily does hit the 14. A 14 would put her at a 75. 75. A 10 points for Sharon would put her at a 76. So having a five-point lead at this final arrow is a pretty. And he moved him up a good, I don't know, 10 yards at possibly. Least, yeah, at least probably. Yeah. Which one, brown bear? Yeah, brown bear. Brown bear. We're just confirming that is the target. And boy, oh, right, you, we just had that down shot down there down. of the target. It's lit up. You can <laughs> see everything on yeah. that. You can see Emily going side to side there. She's working her number, whether she's looking at the target, looking at the detail, looking at the ground. She's seeing how far something moves in her, per, in her, you know, perception, her depth perception of that target. Um, she'll figure out a number, and you can see how big that 14 yeah. is out there, high right of that 10 ring. So. Again, she's got nothing to lose. This is 14 or bust right here. I'm sure the crowd wants to see her hit that 14. She can miss it and still take second. So this is, I think she hits it. What do you think? I'm going to say yes. Okay. Last year, she just crushed it in the <laughs> shoot downs. She came in and just shot as good as anybody I've ever seen mm -hmm. in the shoot down. So she excels in this platform. For those of you that don't know, her last name is McCarthy. Yes. She's married to <laughs> Mr. Dan McCarthy. And as they said in the preview package earlier, Dan's won six in a row, going for seven. And he is leading. He is leading. So. And Jack's married, or Sharon's married to Jack Wallace, so. We'll see him. Yeah, we'll see him after a while. These <laughs> couples, they if they live together, they practice together, they probably work on equipment together, they have a really good feel for this game, and I'm sure if they do practice together, they're all helping each other. Yeah, Emily's got her game face on. She was looking serious. 14, girl. Get it. Oh, just low just right of it. Right. Good shot. So an eight will put her at 469. That means Sharon needs four points to win this tournament. Eight. Basically hit the target and yeah. get five. <laughs> She's feeling pretty good right now, I'd say. Now, I, we want to hear the crowd start pushing her to shoot the 14. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, if she just hits the target, she wins, so. Not super risky. They're not too far. I don't know what their distance is, but they moved them up yeah. 10, 11, 12 yards from where they were. I once told Jeff Hopkins that he shot the turkey in the head. I'd let him have it. He did. He did it. I remember that. <laughs> Roanoke, Virginia. <laughs> Mike Tyrell just said he told Jeff Hopkins in a shoot-off one time if he shot the turkey in the head, he'd give it to him, and Jeff did. <laughs> That was in Roanoke, Virginia in probably 2005, I'm guessing. Let's see if Sharon goes for that 14. She she's, might want to just lock it up. She's holding so good. Yep. Good 10. Go for the 10. Yep. Why not? 476 <laughs> and another victory for Sharon Wallace.
That is incredible. That's a good way to finish off her weekend as well as she shot. Yeah. And she did what she needed to do. She did shoot an eight on that turkey out there, but she kept it in the 10 ring, having a nine point lead. These girls really had to shoot an aggressive round and it's not easy with a little bit of breeze out there. So Sharon put herself in a good position to win this tournament. Absolutely, and she has won her share. There you saw her husband, Jack Wallace. <laughs> he gave her a big hug and a kiss. Hey, that takes precedence over talking to us, so we certainly won't give her hay for that, but she's making her way over to the interview station, and I believe she can hear us now, Sharon Wallace. Yes. How's that for finishing off that weekend? Uh, uh, I don't even have words. Uh, I just... Uh, I really came in this weekend with a completely different game plan um, because I was tired of shooting low eights, low fives, and uh, I shot a lot of uppers, a lot of lowers, and if the upper was blocked, then I could shoot at the lower, so I became very versatile for this tournament, and it really helped me a lot, so, and changed a couple things on my bow, and of course, Jack has been playing uppers for years and been begging me to play uppers and finally I gave in after Foley and it worked out perfectly. Hit a couple out here today even, but didn't call them. No, didn't call them. <laughs> Overjudging, maybe just a tad, but I just wanted to really just stay in the 10 with the wind and everything and just, uh, just I, I'm just over the moon, happy, very blessed, happy to be here. Congrats on a new game plan. Do you think you'll continue to shoot this up, or are you going to try to refine that, or are you going to stay with that lower lower 12 game? No, I think I'm going to keep sticking with this, and I'll probably start shooting at even more uppers. Uh, there's just a, a couple targets. I'm still not quite uh, used to aiming up there yet because it took me a while to even feel comfortable because I've been shooting at lowers for years. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep going at it. Congratulations, Sharon. Good show. Thank you so much. Congrats. Great weekend, Sharon. Thank you. All right. Sharon Wallace is our women's pro champion. We're going to step away for a moment. We will be right back. Next up is senior pro.
just me or this horse got tougher all of a sudden? A lot of these are tighter. You can't see the head, you can't see the back end. <laughs> Freaking Wolverine yeah. was a tough judge. I don't really know how far, but I think it's far. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> All right, Darren, we got Senior Pro up. There is our leaderboard. Tell us what we're looking at. Tim Gillingham killed it this weekend. He's sitting in a 439. He hit 23 bonus rings, so he hit 23 12s out there. He only shot 1815. That's a killer round. Tony Tazza, nine points behind it at a 430. Still an impressive score. Michael Braden at 420. Jeff Hopkins, 417. Keith Alstrom rounding out the top five with a 407. So, should be a good race for first, second, and third right there. Fourth, fifth. We'll see what happens. All right, we are going to bring out our archers now. Let's throw it to Louis Holmes. And now for the Senior Pro Division, your fifth qualifier, Keith Alstrom from Waxhaw, North Carolina, qualifying in at a 407. Our fourth qualifier, with a 417 from Lacona, Iowa, Jeff Hopkins. Your third qualifier, at a 420 from Keller, Texas, Michael Braden. And sitting in number two from Boswell, Pennsylvania with a 430, Tony Taza. And your top qualifier in the senior pro division, Tim Gillingham from Provo, Utah, coming in at a 439. All right, Darren, so we're getting a look at that stabilizer setup of Tim Gillingham. I didn't think it could get any crazier, but those back bars grew by 10 inches from the last shoot. Yeah, Tim, <laughs> we've said it before if you've watched. Tim is not afraid to try anything. He thinks outside the box, and you can see those back bars are almost as long as his front bars, and he's tweaking his setup. And I can't argue with the guy. He hit 23 bonus rings. He's got a nine-point lead sitting at a 439. That's a crazy score. So uh, hats off to Tim. Best of luck to him out there. But I'm looking at Tony Taz's round, 430 with 16 bonus rings. He only shot 1-8 in qualifying. Clean, very clean. Very clean round. So this should be a good shoot-off. Um, the wind favors Tim's style of shooting. So we'll see what happens out there. Yeah, his, so Tim's back stabilizers, I asked him, they are 30 inches a piece. So wow. you just never hear of anybody doing that. If folks at home want to go buy that same stabilizer set up, you're looking at about uh, $1,200 just in stabilizers, I'm going to guess. So there it is right there. Looks like some type of an antenna, very stable shooting platform, and it's obviously working for Tim. Hey, and guess what business Tim's in the business of? Oh, yeah, of. he sells stabilizers. <laughs> <laughs> Bee Stinger, he's been with them, Bee Stinger and Gold Tip. Good look, look at Tony at Tazza Tony. there. I think he... He shot that turkey, He though. was on that turkey. Oh, yeah. He's second-guessing his numbers right now, I would say. There's Jeff Hopkins, one of the legends in this game. Jeff is. He's been doing this forever, been successful at every level. Of course, I think he's only ever shot pro and senior pro. 12 for Tim to start, why 10. not? 4.51 for Mr. Gillingham. 
I bet if you asked him how his weekend went, the only thing he would talk about is the five that he shot. Probably, probably. Tony did clip that eight line there, so he only lose a few points. Mm -hmm. Moves him to 438. Which Tim, Tim just increased his lead by another four points, so. Our tournament director there, Don Bailey, holding up the scores. He told me his philosophy on these score car cards are in. It's in unless you can prove that it's out. Ah, gotcha. So that's how he said he judges, or he uh, picks his arrows, calls his arrows. Mm -hmm. So he goes in assuming it's in, unless he can see evidence that it's out. Gotcha. So benefit to the shooter. And as we mentioned, you know, before many times on these targets, it's foam. So the, lo the line mm -hmm. moves. It does yep. move. Yeah, these carbon arrows, they drag that foam deeper into the target and it'll pull and distort that line. Just because it pulls the line doesn't mean it's in. You have to touch the line. Right. So Jeff Hopkins knows how to hit a 12. He's got that. All right. He's chasing down Michael mm -hmm. Brayton there. He's only one point out of third right now. So, again, third place from Martin would pay some big money to Jeff. So he's trying to get that third position on the podium. Now, here we go to Keith Alstrom. You want to talk about somebody who's excited to be in this shoot? I guarantee it. And it's Keith's birthday. Happy it is birthday, his birthday Keith. today. Yes. 53 he turned today. <laughs> Good birthday present for him. Mm -hmm. Keith Alstrom, I mean, you know, a lot of these archers out here make their living doing that. Keith is a tree trimmer. Yep. He yep. cuts down trees. He's do working full time, long weeks. Shoots when he can. He's been on some sort of a diet plan. He's lost a lot of weight. He had to get yeah. new shooter jerseys. He actually went down in size. <laughs> so, yeah, Keith's doing a lot of positive things. He's working hard at archery, and it shows he's out yeah. there in this shoot-off. And Good birthday present for him. This is his third shoot-down ever. So we're happy to see him out there. Coming up on arrow number two. We'll start your one minute now. Tim's confidence has to be sore, and he shot such a great qualifying round. Stepped up 12, the first target in the shoot-off. There's a big gust just yeah. as they're shooting. It's a little windy. He's not scared of that wind. You can see his wind, <laughs> his wind checker tied off to those bars right there. Zooming in on Keith. Go, oh, he 14 it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That'll get the crowd going. That is the shortest target, the hyena is. Should get a good applause from everybody right here. That was a no doubt 14. There it is. There we go. Four, good for you, one. Keith. <laughs> Keith's wife, Gina, I want to give her a shout out. She helps us with scoring through the two days. Um, she and Digger Coger's wife, Destiny, they're a big help to us mm -hmm. getting scores. So Gina and Destiny, thank you very much. Another 12 for Tim. Here he goes. Good look at Tony on that long deer. And Tony's low right again. He's got something going on. He hit the same spot that he did on that turkey. Survey says five for Tony Tazza. 4.43, so he's now, Tim has a 20-point lead over Tony right now. That's crazy. Michael Braden now, he might see him start taking some chances because he, Tony is now within reach. Yeah. Start shooting some 12, a maybe 12 14s. Here to, a 12 here, put him within one point, so he shot center 10. Okay. Gotta move Michael to 4.40. Jeff Hopkins. Jeff Hopkins, he never plays it safe. No. So. He's not out here for second. No. He was 22 points behind Tim. That's almost over insurmountable in a shoot down. So I'm guessing Jeff will play a little safe and try to get that podium spot. Tim Gillingham, 463 and 25 bonus strings. Now enjoys a 20-point cushion. Stay on track, but things are tightening up. Except at the top, mm -hmm. Tim's going out there. Tim, I believe, is on the longest target, but again, he's judged the first two perfectly. 
as he's done most of the weekend. And the leader in bonus points is Tony by one. He's got that long, super long D loop. Mm -hmm. He's got the long stabilizers, two out front. Just nothing is normal about yeah. Tim's no, setup. Tim's six seven. He's got like a thirty three and a quarter, thirty three and a half inch draw. And I'm not a hundred percent sure that bow he's shooting will go that it long. It does not. So he shoots that longer D loop to get him stretched out and comfortable. He's a big man, so he has a shoots a very very long draw length. Has no trouble with speed whatsoever. Good look at Jeff. He's Let waiting down. on that wind. He didn't yeah. like that gust he felt. He's got 45 seconds, plenty of time. There's, There's Michael, Michael Braden. Braden. You can see his stabilizer holding nice and steady. Yep. You can watch the end of those long rods to see how much movement these guys and gals are getting out there. See the wind blowing in the background behind Jeff. It's definitely a factor. 28 seconds, plenty of time. Jeff shoots a, a thumb trigger, but it's pinky activated. Right. He can switch it to where he fires it with his pinky, and that's how he's executing that shot is with pinky tension. That's a special okay. release he designed mm -hmm. for Excel, True Ball Excel. Back in the hunt for second place money. Jeff decided it was time to try to make a move. For Jeff Hopkins, just off that 14 ring that would have put him into a second place tie. With Tony Takes him to a 447 with that eight. All right, Keith. <laughs> I think Keith shot at another 14. Oh, he did. He went high right. Nothing to lose. The no. worst he can finish is fifth. That's where he came in at. Hope for some more of that birthday luck. Yep. Tim Gilliam, our leader with a 20 point lead currently. Back to back 12s. Oh, did he get another one? Boy, he's right close. Oh. <laughs> What do you do? Or There's did he call up her? <laughs> no, he did get it. Wow. When he's shooting like that, there's nothing you can do. Three in a row. Look at him, confident out there. I think he can quit right now and still win. Working hard to stay in second place. Currently a 443. Has a number 12 call. Oh, that boy, that's close. That is close. Not to look. And Tony did call the upper. There. So he's got a chance at hitting that. He's got it. Got it. All right. That'll do about it good. Still 20 points behind. 455, yep. 23 <laughs> points behind now. I don't know. I can't remember there being a 20-point spread between first and second very many times, if ever. Unbelievable. And if you think Tim's not going to shoot at 12s anymore and play it safe, yeah. guess again. And again, you know, we said earlier, anyone within 10 points of the leader will get a shoot of sixth arrow. There's yeah, not much of a chance of that happening unless some kind of disaster would happen out there. So if Hopkins wants to get on that podium, he's the one who's going to have to really put the pressure on to try and get there above Michael Braden. Yeah, he's three points behind Michael right now, as you can see there. So, you know, Jeff would have to shoot an eight. Mike has to shoot a 12. That'd be a four-point swing. They could flip-flop places, or if, you know, Jeff hits a 14, but he's now on the turkey, I believe. He's liable to shoot at it. Jeff doesn't care about second or third place, no. typically. He should, because I don't think he can catch Tim. Jeff is a, runs a big farm in Iowa on his non-archery times. He and his son Scott, farmers from Iowa. They might have a couple of big deer up there too in Iowa. <laughs> I know I've seen pictures of the two of them behind some giants. Mm -hmm. That's a big bunch of wind right there. Yeah. You see them readjusting umbrellas. It's really... Whipping now. I'm hoping our tent stays, stays staked okay. down. Here's Tim. Shooting at that panther. Just left. He called up or he didn't miss it by too far. No. Oh, there we go. Michael Braden got a 12. He got it. That's what he needed to do to hold off Jeff. was on the turkey. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Eight, for Jeff. Eight 
for Jeff. 455. There's a good look There's at Keith, Keith, birthday boy, shooting that long dog. Oh, he went in another 14. He wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's game on yeah. now. He's out there having fun. <laughs> 441 for Keith. Keith's wife, Gina, and their daughter, Kaylee, are both in the audience today watching Dad on his birthday. Just left of that Got upper. 485. <laughs> Big deep breath from Tim there. He's got to be feeling good. He knows this thing's just all but out of reach. Tony, I got an eight. Okay. So one Michael point. Braden. Yeah. One point between Mike and Tony right now. So second place is up for grabs. There, yeah. Michael Braden, of course, famously won that $10,000 a day shoot off in Vegas mm -hmm. that just had everybody excited because I think the kid he was shooting off against was like a teenager or something. I don't remember and who he shot it, off it against. Was super, I know it was super young, and then there's Michael <laughs> in his 50s. So super young, and then you were going to say super old? I wasn't going to no, say. I, I, no. <laughs> Mike's not super old. He's no. in his early 50s. <laughs> yes. Obviously, everybody in the senior pro division is over 50, so. Let's see what Tim's going to do for an encore. There's old Tony Tazza. Him and Mike are still battling for second here. I think it takes some practice to work around those stabilizers. Oh, you better believe it. I wonder what he's going to do next time. I don't, I don't think he should change anything. <laughs> That's not Tim's style. Always tinkering. Yep. He 14 it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my a gosh. Five. <laughs> he just decided, why not? Yeah, <laughs> why not? Got to love it. Gone. And then that's Tony on that bear. Here's Tim. Look at that. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Big high five. A 10 for Tony. Ten. Tony must have called that upper. Yeah. 473. So, depending on what Michael did, we'll see who got second, who got third. A 12. Michael's on the Michael turkey. Eight. Nope, that's oh. an 8. Yeah. So, Michael's at 470. So, Michael will get third. Tony will get second. Held him off. Tim's going to be your champion. Tim, this will be his second win in a row, and Foley he ended on a 14 as well, too. Mm. Eight for Jeff. 463. Talking about singing happy birthday for Keith. Just wide Eight there. For Keith. Four, four, nine. And here we go. And the man of the hour. To end it. Put a stamp on it. That's a, it's an impressive shoot down. He hit four out of five bonus rings, and one was a 14. 14. There it is. <laughs> 499. Getting close to 500 points is not easy in a judging class, and Tim missed it by one. He missed one 12 or 14 ring in that round. Otherwise, it had a 501. Unbelievable. Mike Tyrell just mentioned that if he'd have hit a 12, he'd have had a 501 and five bonus That's rings. That's crazy. Crazy good. At the last tournament, he had a chance to shoot the 14 ring, but he just did it, so we're done, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to bring Tim over here and talk to him about his weekend. That was about as impressive as we see. You'd think you were talking about somebody who, like, needed to put the pressure on to win, but no. And so there he is, Tim Gillingham. What a show.
Tell us about that uh, ending round there, especially that 14. I got the numbers pretty right. <laughs> Our bets are easier with no pressure. I better never hear you say anything about marked yardage is better than <laughs> judging. You shot one eight and one five all weekend. Hit four out of five out there, dude. You shot awesome this weekend. It's a lot of fun when you know how far it is. I guarantee it. <laughs> I guarantee it. Tim, congrats. That's impressive. Thank nice you, weekend. Appreciate it. What was working for you out there? Just uh, you just getting the yardage right to start with. It's momentum. I've always said game is about momentum for me personally. I mean, I have to develop, you know that that positive energy that just seems to feed on itself. It seems like when you judge yardage good, you start judging it better. You judge it bad, you start judging it worse, you know, yeah. so. And uh, tell folks at home about those stabilizers there. I said you lengthened them from the last shoot? Um, no, I mean, before indoor nationals, uh, I, uh, I just tried the night before I left, I just tried some 30s. You know, a guy named Terry Reynolds that we shot with years ago, tr come to a tournament one time with 30 front, 30 back. And I thought, well, let me just try it. I never tried it, you know. You never know till you try it. And I seen a, you know, a remarkable slowdown in my sight picture. And um, I, so far, I really like it. You going to stay with it for the next tournament, or we're going to see something new? Yeah, I'm going to Arizona Cup, shooting the wind next weekend with it, and see what it does. Fantastic! Congrats, big guy. Thank Congrats, you. Tim. Great weekend. All right, Tim Gillingham is our senior pro champion. Great round by him. Next up, we have Open Pro. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here at Uchi Creek for the Elite Archery Pro-Am.
You can't win it today, but you can sure lose it. First rule of getting the 12, you gotta be in the 10 ring. All right, welcome back, everyone. Here we are with the Open Pro standings. Darren. Dan McCarthy, 430. As we said earlier, he's won six in a row, trying to get his seventh. Joseph goes only two points behind. Jack Wallace right there in third at a 426. Chris Hacker at a 424. Danny Evans at a 418. These five guys are much tighter. This should be a much more interesting shoot down right here. All right, we want to get to this one because this is going to be exciting. So let's go to Louis Holmes. He's going to bring in our archers. All right, for our third shoot down for the evening, Open Pro. Danny Evans is sitting in fifth place from Ponticello, Illinois at a 418. Number four, from Arkansas, Chris Hacker sitting at a 424. And your third qualifier, coming in at a 426, from Townville, South Carolina, Jack Wallace. Sitting in second from Alabama, qualifying in at a 428, Joseph Goza. Sitting in the number one seed, a new face, Dan McCarthy from Ozeka, Wisconsin, coming in at a 430. A new face there. Yeah, a new <laughs> face. That's Mr. McCarthy. He's earned that title. And we want to emphasize, again, he is going for seven okay. in a row. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any so run like that in your I, years in this game? Yeah, Levi's probably won combined IBO ASAs over sometimes six tournaments in a row, but I don't know if I've seen anyone ever win six ASA I events like in a row. I don't think anyone's ever done that. Gotcha. Let him glass it one last time. Because I know there's been a couple years where Levi won every leg of an IBO. Yeah, right. the, the first, the second, and third. So throw a couple ASAs in between there. He may have won five in a row, but the streak that Dan's on is, is I don't know if it'll ever be topped. We should mention Levi is not here this weekend. His wife, Samantha, had a baby girl the other day. Congratulations yes, to them. congrats to both of them on that. And also uh, Shane Sears. He shoots in the known pro division. Right. He, they had a new baby just a few days ago. Had a little baby boy. So congrats to Shane as well. Congrats. There's a good look at Chris Hacker. Good shooter. Chris worked hard this weekend to get here. He shot uh, 16 up today to get into that shoot down. That's a solid round. There's Jack Wallace, Sharon's husband. Sharon's been working with Jack. She's, she's got him lined up pretty good, it looks like. <laughs> Jack was our bonus ring leader for the weekend, so he kept playing. He, I saw him this, today, and he, he would shoot. A 12 and then an 8, a 12 and then an 8. Mm. He said, man, I'm just not getting anywhere. <laughs> All right, first up for our leader, currently with a two-point lead. Dan Look at McCarthy. that. And that's how you start right there. Inside out. 12 for Dan McCarthy. Wow, that guy's so good. 442 for Mr. McCarthy. Sorry, Danny, the 10-point <laughs> lead is going to be there after this. Unless you're 14. Today. Joseph Goza, he's up next year. He also Joseph worked Goza. this weekend. He was quiet in the background, then all of a sudden today, he just started Goza. going for it. And it paid off for him to work his way to second place. Yeah, Joseph's a great yardage judger. I did some judging with him on Thursday out there. He, he walked up on me on the range while we were practicing looking at targets. and. 
I had just misjudged one by about two and a half yards. And he looked at it, he's like, yeah, probably 39. It was 39.3. He missed it by .3, so. <laughs> he now stays at There's an eight for Jack, 434 now for him. So these guys, gals, obviously, they're guessing, estimating this distance very, very well to hit these bonus rings. So it's a very awesome skill, a learned skill. Have a solid 10. Chris. Chris Hacker. And applied at the right times can win you a lot of money. Jack Wallace, but three bonus points behind. So Jack and Chris are now tied for third since Jack shot that eight. Let's see if Danny, Danny Evans, Evans can make a move. Look at Danny Evans. Danny Evans is the most patient shooter I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. I could learn something from him. He doesn't do anything when he, until he's ready. Yeah. He doesn't get in a hurry with his shot. He tries to do the same thing every single time, and that's what successful archers do. They're, they're very repetitive. That's all this game is, is repetition. Obviously, the judging distance takes a lot, but if you even if you judge every target correctly, you still have to make a good shot. You can't just get lucky out there all the time. Sometimes two wrongs do make a right, but to be consistent like these guys are, to see familiar faces all the time, they're doing everything good, judging and shooting well. We see Chris working that device on the side of his hat there. He's got a little blinder on. What's that doing for him? He typically, archers don't want to close right. one eye, so yeah. he's trying to keep from getting a double vision or take his left eye taking over as he's aiming, so he doesn't want to squint. His left eye it puts an okay, extra strain yeah. in the muscles on your and face, so he pulls that blinder down so when he's now. looking through his peep, he can't see anything out of his left eye. Keeps him dead center in his peep and his scope. Keeps his alignment perfect. That's a good look at that. Yeah, look at that eye behind the blinder. Mm -hmm. But he still gets the light through. It's not, a sh it's not shading. Yep. There's a good look at Mr. Patient, Danny Evans. Oh, <laughs> he shot that He got it. Speaking of patient. Mm -hmm. Dan shoots such a good shot. That's a long hold for him even. Can't see that turkey too well. He Black. finished high at Vegas, one of the, the, the biggest yeah. indoor tournament in the world, in my opinion. Third place, the Vegas shoot, so he's not just the 3D guy. Mm -hmm. He can play same, that indoor Shooting the same bow, 70 pounds. Okay, first up. Danny Evans. There he 14. goes. 14 for Danny Evans. Good for him. 442. Next, Dan McCarthy with the 12 hero once again dash Danny's hopes. <laughs> for Dan, we have a 10. Danny's back in the game, folks. A 10 for Dan, 452. Joseph Goza, currently at 438. Six in a row. He was our Open Pro Shooter of the Year last year as well, obviously, winning five of six events. Ten for Joseph. Goes into the four forty-eight. Ten for Joseph, 448. I'm still thinking about this streak. Levi, are you watching? If you are, send me a text. Did you have a better streak than Dan McCarthy had? He'd be the only guy that I know of that would have a chance at that. Jack Wallace. Tie with Jack got the 10 there. Jack takes a 10 to the bank. 444. I might be babysitting today. Maybe he's taking a nap. He was up all night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> That's a possibility. And Chris Hacker has a 10 to Chris. 444. Dan McCarthy at 452 and 18 bonus rings. Right. I'm sitting there looking at that, trying to figure out how those scores tied up. Danny hit that 14, so he's only two points out of being tied for third right now. I anticipate some things changing up here. Yeah, I anticipate some things changing up in these next three arrows. Dan is moving to the longest target. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't know the distances. We'll know here before the next division. But that's the grazing doe, and it's the longest target. All right. Is Chris ready? If he's ready, gentlemen, we'll start with one minute now. 
folks are seeing those umbrellas, Dan. Tell them what they're using those umbrellas for. They're trying to. They flip them around so that the wind is sucking into the back side of that umbrella. And what they're doing is trying to keep that wind off the archer so they can at least aim their bow still. If the wind affects the arrow a little bit, that's fine. But they're trying to make the most steady aim and the best shot they can make, so they're trying to block that wind. Look at that bow. You talk about no movement. Mm -hmm. Oh, he wanted that 14. Yeah, he went at the upper there. Shot straight above it. About a yard hot. Dan says this is the first year he's shooting a 40-inch bow. He had been shooting a 36-inch, and I believe he caught that 12. Mm -hmm. He didn't call upper, I don't believe. Oh, he didn't. There's a no. look over Danny first Evans' up, shoulder. Currently at 444. Danny's just tied with Jack right Ross. of the 12 or low of the 14, whatever he was aiming for. Chris that looks like Hacker's fletching. He oh, got yeah. a 14. There That'll we go. change things up. 458 for Mr. Hacker. That never hurts. Chris works at a shop called Jelco out there in Arkansas, yep. and he knows a thing or two about a bow and arrow. Now within, in the within 10 crew for Danny. Eight for Danny. Eight for Danny. Eight. Makes a 450. Next up. See, that's a six-point swing from a 14 to an eight for 22 shooters right there. That's huge. That's another look at Dan McCarthy shooting there. Mm -hmm. Solid yeah. 10 for Dan McCarthy. He did not call upper, so that is a 10. 4 6 2. Call on the Panther and an upper 12 call on the Brown Bear. First, Joseph As Gosa. I said, he had been shooting a 36 inch bow mm -hmm. last year, and he was worried, wondering the if the wind on that big bow was going to hurt him, but so far it hasn't. No, I think he can shoot anything he wants. He's got. Uh, He's a madman behind that string. Another four-fletched arrow. I'm seeing more and more and more of this four-fletch. I guess yeah. I'm going to have to try it. Maybe there's something to it. Guess who preaches about those four-fletch? Uh, Tim Gillingham. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Ten for Joseph, is that right? Yeah. That is Joseph, yeah. 458. Yeah, Tim's the first person that I know of that went to a four-fletch out here. Um, imagine that. He sells Upper fletching and arrows, too. <laughs> Eight for Jack. Eight for Jack. 452. So, right. we do Things have some changing now there. Now, Chris Hacker has climbed up into the third place. Well, a tie for second, tie excuse for second. me. Yeah, you can see there Jack, or Jack uh, Dan's still enjoying a four-point lead, but we've got two targets of regulation, and we will see a sixth arrow in this crowd. Dan is coming to, I believe it's the second shortest target out there. It's the Black Panther. And again, it's lit up. You can, I can see those scoring rings, and if I can see them, anybody can see them. Are you ready? Jack, ready? There's a good look at that right. target. Gentlemen, we'll start your one minute now. Chris is shooting for Hoyt. This is his first year with Hoyt. I'm sure they're glad to see him out there. Mm -hmm. He's a good shooter. Holds nice and steady. Good, strong shot. There's your leader, Dan, Dan McCarthy. So focused. Center. Dead center. So focused out there. He changed his peep size. You were talking about peeps. He changed his peep size okay, over here on the practice bags because he said his pin was star bursting a little much. Mm. So he went smaller, I'm guessing. He went smaller, yep. yeah. There we go. 14 for Hacker. Is that right? Uh, no. That was for Jack. Joseph. Jack. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, everybody. I couldn't see who that was. That was Jack Wallace, 14. There he goes, 466 for Jack. 10 for Chris Hacker. Who's in the 468? 10 for Hacker. Danny Evans on the grazing doe. There he is. Danny Evans was on that longest target. Ooh, that's oh, close. That is close. He typically doesn't shoot up, or he didn't call it. I think he's got that one. Just a quick glance of it. it look, oh, yeah, oh, that's in that's there. That's in there, yep. That's through the line. Through it, 12. yep. That might be the first bonus string we've seen on that. Nope, Tim hit that one. 
Tim missed the Black Panther, so that's at least the second bonus ring we've seen there. 462 for Danny. Next up, our leader, Dan McCarthy, currently in 462 and 18 bonus rings with an upper 12 call. Dead center for Solid McCarthy center for on that Panther. Four, seven, two. Ten for Joseph Goza. Getting Joseph down to the nitty gritty. Goza. Yep. He's on this bear. Currently at 458, he's a 10 to stay tied with Chris oh. Hacker. But it takes and he did not call up her, mm -hmm. so that should be dead center. Good shot, Joseph. Let's put 470. Well, that tightened right. things up. Danny at 472 first, Joseph 470 second, 468 for Chris, now in third. Jack drops down to fourth, and Danny is still in fifth. So one more arrow of regulation, and right now all five of them would be in the sixth and final arrow. So this is a big arrow for everybody. Yep. And Dan is on, I believe it's the second longest target, that bear. And 16 bonus rings. Jack it's Lawson out there. And I wonder if Joseph will try to 14 this hyena. It is the second longest target. I don't think he will. He's only two points out of the lead. I think a 14 is risky. But he might. It is the shortest target out there. He judges good enough to shoot at it. Because I promise you he knows how far it is. All right. Good look at Joseph Jack in that Durant. pretty purple PSE. I think he calls yes. it Huckleberry, I believe. I've seen <laughs> online. Huckleberry. All right. Gentlemen, we'll start your one minute now. Do you name your bows, PJ? I don't. I don't either. I, I, Maybe I should. Might make more shooting. I think that's now. a secret. I don't know. It <laughs> might be. I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> Joseph's really glassing hard down there. I wonder if he's not going to try to make a move right here and go into the final arrow in the lead. Or tied if Dan 12's this bear. Big arrow for everybody right here. Yep. Dan, Dan did, shot. He didn't look he happy. He didn't like that. Nope. Now he's looking over to see uh, what Joseph's Jack. doing. Dan did not. Oh, he got it. He did go for he it. He got it. So that's right, big. I don't know what Dan did, but he, from the look of his face, he wasn't happy. No. There's McCarthy there. Oh, he's, he just shot a 10. That's going to be a big move right there by Joseph. McCarthy for bonus rings at 18. 4.84 for Joseph. Joseph and Dan, they shoot together a lot, too. Practice mm -hmm. together. And Usually a precursor to making a play for the 14. I believe that's Can't just a 10. That yep. That's Jack. Four, four, seven, six. Still six. He's still within 10. We're going to assume that there's a hacker on the. That's a 10 for him. Just left. Four, seven, eight. Mr. Bailey Danny Evans is going to have to hit a 12. For Chris. Danny's going to have to have a 12 to get in the final shot since Joseph hit that 14. Yeah, Next he's up for Danny Evans. He's on the Panther. Needs a 12 to shoot the final arrow, or the sixth additional arrow. Yeah. Oh, he went at the 14. Oh, he went at it. Eight. Just missed. Yep, yeah, so he's got an eight. He'll end with a 470. Fifth place for him. Now, here's the one. Our previous leader, 472, Dan McCarthy. I believe we are going to see a lead change. Mm -hmm. We are. 482 with that 10. So Joseph will get to shoot last in this final arrow. How about that? Mm. He didn't Interesting. Get, he didn't get the memo that Dan was supposed to continue the streak. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Joseph's trying to upset his momentum. Let's give a big round of applause. I want to say it's been a while since Joseph won one. Joseph shooting a new bow company this year, too. Yeah, He's shooting Darton. a Darton. Yep. It's obviously working well for him. 
He does judge fantastic, so that's a good combination. If you've got good equipment and you know how far these are, pretty easy game. He says he's won three ASAs. He didn't identify which ones, but boy, I can't remember one in recent times, last couple years, that Joseph has won. When he used to shoot fingers years ago? Oh, yeah. Oof. He was seven-time ASA Shooter of the Year in fingers. Yeah. There's no longer <laughs> a, a pro <laughs> fingers class, but when there was, Joseph Goza was the king yeah. of that castle. They did bring out the wolf. That was our hidden target. So Scott Parrott said, back it up. Back it up. Mm. Move him up and back it a little bit. Yep, he is standing in front of the shooting line, mm -hmm. so. They're in front of the longest target, but he's moving them up from the old shooting line. I don't know, six yards, seven yards or so. They can't get that thing to stand up, so they're going to stand behind and hold it while you guys shoot. All right, you're Dan McCarthy. Well, let's see here. Can Dan do any damage? Oh, yeah. Chris Hacker could. All right. Ah, Chris, if Chris shoots a 14. Jack's going to go first. Jack probably will shoot at the 14. Has to, yeah. He's in fourth. He's trying to get to third. If he shoots a 12, he moves to 488. Hacker shoots a 10. They're tied, so bonus rings would separate that tie for third place. Yeah. Jack really needs a 14 here to put the pressure on Chris. Then Chris would have to hit a bonus ring to take that podium spot back. A lot going on right here on this arrow. I can almost bet you that Dan's going to shoot at a 14. Just, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What's he going to do? Well, let's look at bonus rings. So Dan had 17 coming in. Joseph had 16. And I know Joseph hit at least two, so that would put him at 18. Dan hit the first one, which would put him at 18. So they might be tied all the way across if they tie on score. Like I said, there's a lot going on on this arrow right here. Yeah. The wolf's a dark gray. I don't know how well you can see it there. I don't know how well they can see that ring. They'll be able to see the core line. You can see where that insert goes yeah. in. So it's a pretty good reference of where that 14 is, but right, I'm thinking Jack I'm thinking Jack has to shoot at the 14 here. I, it's Chris Hacker I'm looking at. If he hits that 14 and Dan goes for the 14 and ends up with a five, mm -hmm. he's going to flip down to third. Yeah, Hacker could get to second. And then a potential tie. If he shoots a 14 and Joseph yeah. shoots. No, nope, Joseph just has to shoot a 10 to win if that's the case. Bonus rings. Joseph has 18 bonus rings. Jack leads with 19 bonus rings. And Chris Hacker. Yeah, Mike, Mike's giving a breakdown of where everybody's at right now. If Dan shoots a 14, no then Joseph would have to hit a 12. All right, Jack, you ready? To tie, he's going to force Joe. If he hits it, he's going to force yeah. Joseph to shoot a 14 to win. Yeah. I don't know that you want to extend okay, it. Just shoot to try to 12. try to shoot a 12 to tie him. I think you want to try to win it outright. You don't want to shoot very many arrows against Dan trying to win. Here goes Jack. Jack first. I think it's got to be a 14 here. I've been wrong multiple times, but I think this is a 14. He went at it. I think he's just oh, over it. Just over it. That's Boy, close. That's close. A yard, says. maybe. Man, show me a, a wiggle yeah. would have caught that one. And yep. just over it just for an eight. Over. Mm. Just so he's at a 484. <laughs> it's going to be. All right, Chris, Fourth place, barring ball, disaster. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you. Chris needs an eight to Good get on the podium. Chris Hacker currently at 478. Trails Joseph Goza by six points and two bonus rings. I think Chris, so Chris has to shoot at it too. Direction right now. He's surely not just protecting to. Yeah. He might be protecting a check. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. If he shoots a five, he does not mm -mm. get there. If he shoots an eight. 
now. If he aims at the bottom of the 14 and has it nailed, he could get it. But if he shoots an eight, he still takes third. But hitting the 14 would uh, serve him well right here. He can't hit a five. That's the bad one. Center oh, 10. Center 10. All right. 488. Okay. So now right. we'll start your one minute now. you're Dan. Ten you just need an eight. An eight to guarantee to stay second. second. Yeah. Yeah. I don't now, think he's thinking Dan about second. Dan's thinking about win, and I think he shoots at the 14 here. For bonus if he shoots a five, he drops the third. This is a truly a strategy moment for Yeah, that Dan may not bother him too much. <laughs> If, he takes a 12, if you ain't first, you're last. That's right. right. That's a big arrow. That's a lot going on. Big wind right now. He's, he's trying to position yeah, something. I don't up. know what he's looking for. I think he's wanting to see the scores. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Can you see it? Okay. You're he wants to know what he needs to do. Need he's wanting to see where he's at. Mike Tyrell is giving him the breakdown. That 14 is a little bit bigger than that 12, but of course you don't have the protection of the 10 mm -hmm. around it. No, it's right, high risk. Now. High risk, high reward. Dan's been in this position so many times, I just feel like he's got to shoot the 14 here. Yeah. He's not protecting the podium. He's trying to win. Long hold. Oh, he got it. Smoked it. <laughs> wow. Now that puts all the pressure right on Joseph. Yeah. Four, nine, six. For Mr. Right. McCarthy. There's, All right, what are you doing? There's yeah, those, as you uh, said, Joseph. there's those four Fletches. So Joseph has Joseph. to shoot a 12. He has to shoot the 14 here to yeah. try to win. He has to. Oh, so he's asking. He wants to know bonus rings. And you're currently one bonus ring behind. A 12 ties him. We go with closest 12 tiebreaker. You shoot a 14, you win. There you go. You there you go. 10, you come in second. You shoot an eight, you come in second. You shoot a five, you come in second. The world is your oyster. <laughs> if you miss the target, you Mike's explaining to him that he can his, hit the target and come in right, second, but he pretty well needs a 14 to win, a 12 to tie, yeah. and then they will shoot off. There's a nice fresh circle dot in the 14 ring, Dan, just put there for you. That's pretty nice of Dan. Joseph will get the yardage right. If he can hold yeah. it all together mentally and make a good strong shot, he can win this outright with a 14. All right, we'll start your one minute. We go. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> McCarthy streaks on the line. Joseph's first win in quite a while with a new bow. I mean, this is a big arrow. Let's see. Oh, he, he missed. shot an eight. He missed. <laughs> and he throws oh. his arms up. 492. Wow. He'll take second. McCarthy's streak continues. Yeah, wow. Dan, I mean, he did what he had to do. He did. Nice. That's all he could do. And, and, and Joseph put himself in a great position. He hit yeah. the 14 on the hyena to, to take the lead. And then Dan just does what Dan does and smokes that 14 and says, okay, Joseph, the pressure's on you now, pal. Unbelievable. Good friends there. I know Dan would have been thrilled for him, but yep. he's always said his job is to win. His job is to win. Friendships Basically. aside. Yep. <laughs> $800, no, $600 he's going to make his way over here. We're going to ask him. If you stick around and you win, you Ask him <laughs> about that last arrow. <laughs> Here comes Dan. He is feeling emotional, I oh, believe. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he is. Him and Joseph are tight. There he is. Dan, hey. I can tell you're feeling it. Tell me about that. Seven in a row. 
<sighs> Honestly, I'm having a hard time <laughs> even thinking about it. Uh, I love Joseph like a brother. Yeah. And uh, we compete. <clears throat> we work hard at this game to win. Um, but I love that guy. He's a, he's the best guy I've ever met. As far as the heart goes, he's he's truly as honest and good of a person as you can be. And I was – I'm not going to give a tournament away, and I'm going to try to win it to the end. But I was I, – I hate it. I was honestly pulling for him there at the end, hoping he didn't do it because he's, he's just awesome. Yeah. Joseph put himself in a great position, 14 in that hyena there. You know, put the pressure back on you. He obviously got to go last there. But you do what Dan McCarthy does and 14 that wolf. And seven in a row, Dan. What an impressive run. Congratulations. Another fantastic weekend. Hats off to you, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Congratulations, Dan. Great round. There you have it, Dan McCarthy, feeling for his competitors, but he does what Dan does. All right, next up, we have our known pro division. We'll finally get to see how far these targets are. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Elite Archery Pro-Am. We're up with our last division of the night, Known Pro. Darren, what do you see there? <laughs> I see a bunch of big scores and a wide-open race right here. Four guys at 450, Stefan Hansen at 448. These guys know the distance. These guys will shoot some bonus rings. This ought to be a good show. This one, I, I mean, this is, as you said, wide open, anybody's game. I'm excited to see this one. Let's get it started. Let's go to Louie Holmes for our shooter introductions. All right, this is our last shoot off for the evening. Known pro category. Sitting in fifth place from Denmark with a 448, Stefan Hansen. Sitting in number four from Asheville, North Carolina, shooting for Scott, CBE, Justin Hanna, coming in at a 450. <laughs> Sitting in third from Indiana, coming in, tied with 450, Dane Johnson. And sitting in the second spot from Arkansas, shooting for elite, Richard Bowen. And no stranger, sitting in the number one seed from Liberty, Utah, coming in at a 450, Kyle Douglas. All right, Darren, I am interested about this one because we're looking at several guys here who are probably better known for their indoor game. Yeah, I talked to Richard Bowen earlier, and he's like, man, this might be the one. I said, Richard, I'd have never dreamt if you get your first professional win that it would be on a 3D course. I, and not that he's not capable. Don't get me wrong, but Richard has been in every shoot-off from Vegas to indoor nationals to you name it. He makes all these big shoot-offs, has a fantastic mental game, shoots the middle out of an X-ring indoors, but obviously has got – some 3D game out here as well. But again, you know, Kyle Douglas wins everything. Dane Johnson shoots fantastic. Justin Hanna is one of the best archers in the world. And along with Stefan Hansen, they're from Denmark, currently living in Mexico. But Stefan's, he says he's got a bow that's pounding. So this should be a good show. Yeah, Kyle Douglas, we should note, is now three-time NFAA indoor champion, two-time Vegas champ. Yeah. Crazy good how how it's, it's crazy how good Kyle shoots. He can win any tournament he goes to. He's a threat. There's a good look at Richard right there. He's a regular in the NFA and, and Vegas shoot down finals. Stefan shoots uh -huh. a lot of front weight on that stabilizer, holds the bow really well. Yeah. You see, he just missed that 12. He was second in the classic, oh okay, boy, about three years Alvarez. ago. Curry we don't see him much, uh, but we've been seeing him. He seven. was in Foley as well. I think he's going to try and get to everyone this year. Kyle Douglas says, I'm Kyle just going to shoot a 14 and see what happens. Why not? Four, six, four. And that hyena is at 27 yards. Yes. We've got the yardages got now. The we can yardages. talk about them. So 27 yards on that hyena, so it's not too far. Richard shot just low on that turkey for an eight, and that's not a good way to start. And the turkey is 37 yards. Four, five, eight. So he's now six points behind Kyle. This is Richard's first ever shoot down in the ASA. Nice. Ten. Dane on that long grazing doe. Okay, that's the longest target he at called, 49. Yeah, he called upper and hit just left of it for a 10, which that's a great shot. That's half a football field almost, folks, 49 yards. Dane Johnson's one win was here at Fort mm -hmm. Benning. He likes this tournament. Ago. Mr. Justin, 12 points, 4, 6, 2. So he's outright second place right now. 
Justin had himself a day today. He smashed a bunch. He's a good 25 shot. bonus rings he has for the weekend. And he shot a lot of so today. He, he didn't shoot a single eight. He no. never left the 10 ring this Number weekend. Was and That's a center. Upper 12 was called. Yeah. That's a 10. 458. Okay, let's go to the scoreboard and see where we are now. Took one arrow to really split the field up right there. Now there's no more ties. Yeah, there is. Richard and Stefan are tied for fourth right now. Justin Hammond, 462 and 26 bonus rings. Dane Johnson in third. Justin Hanna second, 462. And Kyle first at 464. And Richard, I'm sorry, Stefan Hansen now in fourth at 458 and 27 bonus rings. And Richard Bowen is at 458 and 26 bonus rings. Don't ask me to repeat that. Justin anyway, Hanna. At least one Stephen win last London year, I know. London. He likes that London tournament. Is that what he won? Yeah, he won that 21 and 20. Wow. Um, That's the hardest tournament to win. That power line's wicked. Okay. We need a Good look at Justin there. Target one and target four. He and his wife, Jacqueline, are camping down here this weekend. They pulled a camper from North Stephen Carolina down ready. here this weekend. Oh, okay. Right. We'll start your one minute now. He's a home builder. He is. In his spare time. Works <laughs> in the real estate. Holds steady. Look at that bow. Not moving at all. Got 12. It. I believe he's got that one. I yeah, think it's he good. looks like it. All right, currently at 458 <laughs> in fourth place. All right, Stephen we're going Hansen. over to Stefan Hansen. He went for the 14, and he got it. Oh, no, that's, that's Dane. Oh, there, Stephen did. We were looking at the Stephen Panther, but Stephen got it. it anyway. <laughs> 472 for Stefan. Yeah, they're going to chew that hyena up down there. Knowing the distance and only 27 yards, they're going to wear that 14 ring out. All right, for a leader, currently at 464. This is Kyle. Can he go two bonus rings in a row? Ouch. Oh, no, he's oh, outright. Right. Wow. An eight. Hmm. 472. Yeah. Dude, we could see big wow. changes every arrow here. There's a, there's a look at Richard on that Richard long deer. Oh, did he call did up? He, call up he did not, so he's going to get a 10, I believe. Again, that's 49 yards. Mm -hmm. Four, six, that eight. Dill. Dane Johnson on the Black Panther did call the Okay, the Black Panther is 36 yards. And I believe we're going to see a 14 here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dane Johnson, number 12 call, and up. Uh, 14. 14 for seven, four. So depending on, well, Justin, and I think Justin shot a 12. Yeah. So he and Dane will be tied for the lead now. <coughs> Everything's changing All right. up. Justin Hanna, currently at 462. I'm not 100% sure. 12. Yep, there it was. Yes. All right. Four, four seven, really four. It's a race, PJ. It's a race. Man, we just okay. flip-flopped everything. <laughs> A first place change. Dane Johnson and Justin Dane Hanna, Johnson, 474. Hanna, Kyle Douglas, 474, Stephen Hansen, 472. Richard Bowen, 468. Mm -hmm. Now you got Kyle Douglas and Stephen Hansen at 472. Richard needs a bonus ring. He shot an eight on that first target and then just shot a 10 there, so he's falling behind everybody else because they've been hitting his rings. And now here goes Justin Hanna to the shortest target. Yep. 27 yard hyena. What are the odds he goes for that 14? I'd say about right. <laughs> good. <laughs> Anybody want it up for 12? The Anybody odds are good. For Dane Johnson, one of our co-leaders. Wind's we not quite as, mm -mm. well, just as I say, we get a little gust. Yeah. But it's definitely not as no. hard as it was. It's earlier. far less to, far less than when we started. And what about Justin? Justin, are you ready to go, buddy? 
He's looking at those dots on that hyena, and figuring out how far away he needs to aim to hit that 14. He might see it good enough. He might be able to see that 14 good enough to, they might be able to see the rings. Oh, something on his arrow yeah, he didn't like. Arrow. Good look at Dane holding nice and steady. Yeah. Shooting a hinge style release, pulling, boom, fired. Got that. He called it up. Looked her. like the 12. He called up her and got it, I, I believe. believe he got There's it. There's Justin. See if he can 14 that hyena. Oh, oh man, that's, that's close. Really close. It's like a jaggedy line there. That's really close. All right, first up. Justin Stephen Hansen. Hansen. 474 in first place with 27 bucks. Everybody's turkey. struggling yeah. on that turkey. I got he it. He did get it. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you can see it gotcha. better. Gotcha. 14 yeah, yeah. for Justin Hanna. 488. These guys are going to break Next 500 up, easily. I'm surprised at the scores that are seen on that turkey. Because it's yeah, 37, 37 yards. yards. For Stephen Hansen. Hmm. Makes him a 480 or puts him at a 480. <sighs> a little shake of the head there, like I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. Here's Richard on this. Right. Or, excuse Kyle me. Douglas. Kyle on that long Kyle beer. Douglas. Did he call up her? Uh, I believe he did by the cheers. He yes, did. he did. That guy. Justin Hans four, hanging on eight, lead, four. Richard Bowen went up for 12 calls. Now we got Richard. And he's looking to get some, make up some ground now. Let's see if he went at the 14. That Panther is he 36. did. Oh, he did. And he got smoked it. it. 14. That'll help his All cause. Right. Four, eight, two for so Richard, for if I've got that right. Yep. Now, Dane went and for this upper, he got it, and he's coming around to the shortest target. Mm -hmm. There's his 12. Yep, so it right puts him at a 486, two, two points behind Justin Hanna, and Justin's going over to the turkey. Which, yeah, that'll be interesting. I wonder if Justin goes for the 14 there. People are struggling shooting uh, at the 12. Yeah. They're shooting eight, so I don't know. Depends on what he can see, how much detail. If he's got something to aim at, obviously, if these guys can see it, they can hit it. Are you paying attention, if you're him, to what other people are doing? Like, are you knowing that people have been struggling on that turkey? I don't know. It goes so fast out there, he probably doesn't realize what target they're shooting eights on. Let's see. All right. We're at arrow number four already. Dane's ready, Dane's ready Dane's to go on, on the upper. We'll He's ready to go on the hyena. It's a good look at Stefan Hansen from Denmark, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. living in Mexico. Hey, Justin, what's he shoot at? He 12 that oh, turkey. got it. That's good. And Dane got it. Dane we got figured that was going to happen. So we should have a tie again. Stephen's going to be close. Right. He called the upper. I think yeah. he's going to get that. Wow. They're hitting right. some rings. Here we go. Oh. Oh, sorry, just a 14. Dane, 4, 9, 6. <laughs> they are wearing that hyena out. Okay, guys, turn the hyena around. Apparently it's too big a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyrell saying, turn it around. Dane Johnson's got his dad as his umbrella man and support right, staff up. there. Justin Hanna. Has a 12. 12 for Justin Hanna. That puts him at a 500. Yep. So Dane We're tied. and Justin are 529 bonus rings. Back to being tied again. Mm. Stephen Hansen. I believe Mike just said. Call me up for 12. Well, they do, did I do some math wrong? They've got Dane at 500. Yeah. Yeah, he shot a 14, and uh, Hannah shot a 12, so then they were both at 500. Yeah, gotcha. 12. I did some bad math on my paper here. That's as sweet as a blueberry danish. Right I think Mike just said they're tied on bonus rings as well mm -hmm. now. 
500, 500. Yeah, I had Dane no, incorrect on my third arrow score there. That was math on my fault. Math, math mistake. My bad. Math happens. Yeah. On the Black Panther. Stephanie right. got a 12, so he's at 492. That is correct. I can't see that arrow in the screen here. We'll get the call from. Eight. It's an eight. Whatever it was, it was out. So that is Kyle Douglas. An eight for Kyle. Puts him at 492. So him and Stefan are tied now. Here comes Richard Bowen. Number 12 call on the brown bear. And oh, oh, he shot it to 14. Are you sure? Five. He got a five. That's going to hurt. All right. Here we go. Four eighty-seven. All right. So we got four archers in the mix right now. Mm -hmm. A five is so hard to swallow out here on the known course because these guys hit so, even eights. These guys hit so many rings that if you back up any at all, it's hard to make a comeback. You can see Stefan adjusting his sight right there, getting it dialed to the exact yardage. He's calling upper. He is going to be shooting at the Panther, 36 yards. Richard Bowen is now on the shortest. Dane Johnson's on the turkey, which means Justin's going to be on the long deer. Mm -hmm. So if Dane goes for the 14 here, he could separate himself a little bit going into that sixth arrow because I doubt Justin would ever dream of shooting at a 14 on this long deer. But I have no doubt he can 12 it. There's Stefan. Look at that stack of weights on the end of that stabilizer, and then watch how steady he holds it. Look at that. No moving. Not even moving. I couldn't even hold that thing up. I think he got it I on that too. Panther. Let's see what Dane went. Dane went into 14. Oh, he hit the 12, upper 12. He's right in oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it now. Bad shadow on the screen. Okay. He's Kyle on that bear. Richard Bowen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> center punch the 14 yeah, there. He had to after shooting that eight. Yeah. 14. All right, Richard. 14 for Richard. Got it. Puts him at 501. Dane or Justin takes a 12. Be in the final Dane Johnson up Dane Johnson next up year on the turkey. And 12. it is a 12. 12. All right. Five, one, two. So that's going to knock Richard out of the final arrow. Yeah. He's got 11 points on Richard Justin right now, so Richard won't get to shoot the sixth. Here's Justin on that longest target. Oh, Center 10. Just over that 12. 10. For Justin Good shot at it. So another five, ten. So Dane will get to be the last shooter on the sixth arrow. And upper twelve for Stefan. Stefan oh, called upper man. twelve, but I believe he got the fourteen here. Yeah, oh, yeah. he did. So he's at five oh six. Yeah, for Stephen, right. Fourteen. 506 it is. 506. Okay. 30 bonus rings. And now Kyle Douglas. Kyle Douglas. 492 and 30 bonus rings. Needs at least a 10 to stay within. Kyle the shot on the. Got it. He shot an 8 on the previous target, so and him to go after that 14 there, it's 14. gutsy, but he needed it. Also 506. 506. And he will be ahead of okay, fortunately I'm a computer bonus rings because he had 30, so now he's got 31. And Stefan has 30. Let's see if we're going to bring that wolf back out. Justin had 5, 10, and 29 bonus rings. And third is now Kyle Douglas at 506 and 31 bonus rings. Yep. And fourth Mike is Tyrell's giving it out there. Kyle does have an edge rings. on bonus rings. And in fifth place, there's that wolf. I think we're going to bring him back out. Ken's back there after him. Justin is third, and Dane Johnson gets the last arrow of the night. 
Remember, if we are tied for score and bonus rings, Mike's explaining every, to everybody in the crowd where they're at, and we will see some 14 shot at right here. So we're in front of the grazing doe by a couple yards because we're not okay, going to get so a distance here. Set, we won't know what it is. They will, but we won't. But Scott Parrott no is Just run out there moving them. <laughs> that target is lit up right where they had it. Scott told him to back up. All right, so we're right at the doe, but the shooting line is in front of the line. So we know that deer was 49 yards. Mm -hmm. So it's a little shorter than that now. Minus five or six, they're 43-ish, Yeah, we'll say. We'll see when they put this in the ground if that sun catches those vitals. Yeah. They'll get a good look at it. It's not quite as bright as the deer, but mm -hmm. it, it's not full shadow either. The shadows are getting long. The sun's setting here. I think we're in Alabama. I think so. Yeah, right across the, the river. river Georgia. That's it. I always say Fort Benning, Fort Mitchell, <laughs> but it's Alabama, Columbus, Georgia, Phoenix City, Alabama. We're, we're all right here in all these cities. This is a, a recreational facility of Fort Benning, this Uchi Creek mm -hmm. campground. It's owned by the military. Great place, great venue, beautiful grounds. Our military boys, men and women, have been training all weekend. We we've have, been, <laughs> we have, we've heard, I, and I talked Machine to some, gun and <laughs> yeah, I talked to some guys that served, and I said, what? They said it's a 60 caliber, and they just, just pop, 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 pop. I mean, it was, it's pretty impressive yeah. that, that they're doing these training exercises out here. We've seen helicopters go over, troop transports. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any paratroopers jump out, but sometimes we do. Yeah, last last time we were down here, where they were getting yeah. ready to graduate, I think, jump school, and they were jumping like crazy, and I always <laughs> love watching these guys jump out of those airplanes. Back to archery. Here goes archery. Stephen. Here Hansen. we go. Yeah. All right, Stephen, you ready? We'll start your one minute now. Oh. Boom. Got it. <laughs> That's awesome. Puts him at a 520. Yikes. I'll give a big shout out to our military men and women. Military men and women. For those oh, that yeah. have served, those that are serving currently, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Okay, next up, Kyle Douglas, who is at 506 and has 31 bonus rings. Has really no other choice but to try to chase that and yeah. get 14. Yeah, Mike is explaining that Kyle has to hit the 14, and then he moves ahead of Stefan on bonus mm -hmm. ring. So this is for a podium spot because Richard's going to finish in fifth. Right, Kyle. Yep. A 14 here nice will move Stefan into fourth. Looking at you. Are you ready? We'll start your one minute now. He's got a stack of weights out there, mm -hmm. too. And holds so good. Just, oh, just left. left. So it's Kyle's going to end eight. with a 514. Okay. Stefan just Stephen. moved into at least third. Oh, That's only Kyle his is. second Jeez. ASA podium ever for Stefan Hansen. So congrats to him. Just left. All right. So Justin needs a. All right. He needs go. a bonus ring, because if not, Dane's just going to have to hit a 12 to win this, or hit a 10 to win it. Needs at least a 12 to step ahead of Stephen Hansen. If he tens it, he loses on bonus rings. He has 29. Stephen has 30. Yeah, he's got to shoot for the 14. I think so. He's got I think he has to. If he shoots an 8, he's a 518. So he's still ahead of Kyle. If he shoots a five, he's still ahead of Kyle. So he gets on the podium regardless here. I think he shoots at the 14. Sneak peek at a new Scott release right there. He shoots an eight low. So Justin's got a 518. 
Dane Johnson just needs an eight. For Justin Hanna. Mm. Moves him to 518. Uh, I don't know what right. the bonus ring count is for him and Stefan. 518. Stefan's at 520. Eight. You're currently at 512. Yeah, an eight for Dana. Dane. 30. Just, Jane just needs to shoot center 10 to win this. Yeah, he needs a 10. You take an eight, you come in second. You shoot a 10, you come in first. You shoot a 12, you also come in first. You shoot a 14, they're going to come get you and take you to the hospital. <laughs> Stefan does have 31 bonus rings right. total. We got word. So he. So Dane just needs a center 10. He needs a 10. This yeah. should be a guy of his caliber with a range finder. This should be victory for Dane Johnson. I, I forget his age. He's young. Yeah, he's not he's very old. The youngest one out there. I he's don't know a, if he's 20 yet. Boom, right in the middle. Yep. He's Look a big, at it. He's a big old tall grain fed Indiana boy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating he with is. his dad. <laughs> That's his dad there. Good for him. I'd say he likes uh Fort Benning. He does tournament. all right here. I guarantee it. Second win and that was at least two years ago. That he took that win, so good for him. Dane's a nice kid, man. He's got Super. his indoor game's been coming on strong. He's shooting so good indoors, and obviously he's bringing that skill set out here to the 3D range, and and he's showing them what he's made of. Yes, sir. There's a big <laughs> hug for Braden Galantine. I know the two of them work together. Dane's getting a phone call. It's from his mom. Go ahead. Dane just asked for a break here because his mom called him on the phone there. <laughs> FaceTime me, he says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got to talk to mom. <laughs> uh, everybody's excited for him. <laughs> hey, you got to talk to mom there, right? Oh, uh, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's my number one supporter. And that's that's all I know. Tell us about that round. What a great weekend. You like it here. Uh, I love Fort Benning. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, honestly, coming into this weekend, I, do, I didn't have the uh, confidence, um, especially through, like, the first ten targets. Um, then I finally realized, you know, I just needed to trust my process. Um, I've been here before. Uh, I just needed to trust my shot. And uh, once I started trusting my shot, everything just started falling through its place. This is your second win, I believe. Yep. Both of them have come at Fort Benning. What do you like so much about this place? It's Fort Benning, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Dane. Thank How you. about that shoot down there? I mean, you were gunning for those 14s when you needed them. You had no fear. Uh, well, in my mindset, I didn't come here for second. Um, uh, I, I came here to win it. And not only that, but I'm more of a guy that wants to give a uh, show for my fans. Um, Fantastic. Or for the audience here. Um, I want to give him a good show. You put on a good show. Congrats, Dane. I appreciate it. Congrats, Thank Dane. You. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Dane Johnson is our known pro champion. That's going to do it for us here from the Elite Archery Pro-Am at Uchi Creek. For Louis Holmes, Darren Christianberry, I'm PJ Riley. Thanks to everybody out there for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll see you next month. Camp Minden, Louisiana. <laughs>